Good afternoon to all our listeners and viewers of the NDC Heartbeat Podcast. Uh, we're happy to have all of you on this afternoon. Those who are on WeFM, Vibes FM, Spice Capital Radio, Talk Grenada. Those who are also on the NDC Facebook feed and YouTube. But also want to let you know that today, for the first time, we are now also on Ride Along in Brooklyn, New York. And we're also on 1FM. 100.5 FM, Labby FM Radio out of Grenville. We want to welcome those and many more who are planning to come on to carry the Heartbeat feed on a Sunday. Thank you all for joining the Heartbeat today. Those who are on radio and those who are online, we thank you for being there and um, we just want to give thanks and praise for a beautiful, another beautiful Sunday afternoon in Grenada. So, welcome to this Heartbeat episode. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be chatting with the acting Prime Minister of Grenada, the Honorable Andy Williams. He'll be talking about the Prime Minister's visit to Cuba, and he'll be talking about his ministry, projects to be undertaken, and several other matters. We're also going to be hearing from the Minister of Health on the vexing issues concerning pig farming or pig rearing in Grenada and how the disposal of such waste is handled. And he'll be making recommendations. This is a matter of concern to several residents all over Grenada and the Minister of Health plans to work very closely with these farmers. Important producers in Grenada, but also paying attention to the concerns of residents. Then we'll hear from the Minister of Youth and Sports, the Honorable uh, Jonathan Lecret. Uh, probably most of you would know that there were two fires in his constituency, also one in Springs. We've been having a lot of fires over the last couple of months. We need to pray as a nation to ask that these fires cease. So that will be a program for today. Um, so we'll be back with you in a moment. We have in studio the Honorable Andy Williams, Acting Prime Minister. And um, we'll be getting back to you very shortly. Back in a moment. On your marks, get set, go, get ready. It's the St. Mark's 50th Golden Jubilee Independence Celebrations. Here is a calendar of events. On the 14th of April, we have the Run St. Mark Run and Track Meet at Samaritan Junction starting 7 a.m. Then on to the pasture, Alston, George Park, Victoria. On the 20th of April, we have the Parish Independence Day celebrations. We are St. Mark. It will be in Victoria, St. Mark, starting 9 a.m. to 2 a.m. We've got food, we've got music, we've got exhibition and culture on that day. On the 26th of April, we have the school debate at the Samaritan School at 10 a.m. On the 30th of April, we have the forum at Bonaire Government School at 6.30 p.m. To book a stall for Parish Day, contact 419-5040. We are St. Mark, so let's show them how we do it. Welcome back to the NDC Heartbeat Podcast. Again, welcome to all of you who are on. And um, in studio with me is the Honorable Andy Williams. He is the acting Prime Minister for the time being until Prime Minister returns to Grenada this afternoon with his delegation. Welcome to Heartbeat once again. It's a pleasure to have you always. Yes, Terry, it's always a pleasure to be here also. Great, yes. fantastic. Well, the Prime Minister and his delegation uh, visited Cuba over the weekend and yeah. they'll be back later on today, I understand. And um, tell us something about that visit, the importance of the visit, and the long-standing relationship which Grenada has enjoyed with Cuba over the many years. Well, to start with, good afternoon to everyone on a blessed Sunday, sunny Sunday. Yep. And before I get into it, Terry, I, I remember traveling, I think, to one of the countries in the eastern region la last year. And they said, you know what, it's, it's going to be a sunny day, very clear skies and everything. Mm -hmm. And when I we woke up and I saw it, I'm like, Claire, when you come to Grenada, 
and you see the wonderful clear skies. It's just so beautiful. Absolutely. Yes. So Absolutely. it's not a secret that, that, that Grenada and Cuba have enjoyed very good relations in the past. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, it's about four to five years of, you know, of close relationship that, that we have had with Cuba. Yep. And they have been with us in, you know, through thick and thin, through tough times, through the good times. And Cuba has always been a friend in terms of not just speaking, but giving us resources. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to commend Cuba for that. And the Prime Minister really thought it was necessary to, to travel with his um, delegation this week and weekend, you know, in, in, in order to show that support to Cuba. And, you know, to show our appreciation. Mm -hmm. in, in addition to this, we will be talking about some new initiatives that we are going to embrace in terms of Cuba and Grenada working together to really move us forward and not just move us forward but move the region forward mm -hmm. when the prime minister returns this afternoon we, we will be having a press conference where he will update us on some of the things that we have in train mm -hmm. right there was some memorandums that were signed mm -hmm. and he will bring us up to date on it i don't want to talk before yeah, you know he, um, he speaks but all in all you know it, it's just us working together and building that relationship with cuba Mm -hmm. And also, Cuba is going through a tough time now. And sometimes we think that they always have to give and they always have to show support. But it's also good for us to show support to them. Mm -hmm. And that is just what our Prime Minister is doing and the other ministers that went there. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah. Fantastic indeed. That's wonderful. It, yes. You know, it's just amazing how giving Cuba has been, not just to Grenada, the entire region, and yes. I would say the world, a uh, country that continues to suffer um, internationally yes and um, they just keep on giving and giving it's 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 almost spiritual and biblical yes and the more you give the more you get and when you think about what they have been through mm -hmm. and what they are going through in terms of san sanctions and yeah. so mm -hmm. and they still continue to give yeah when you look at our doctors in the hospital oh, yeah. most of them are from Cuba mm -hmm. and they continue to show support to us year in and year out yeah so we really appreciate Cuba and I think that if you are talking about a friend to Grenada Cuba is indeed a, 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 a true friend to us. Absolutely. Yeah. And so we really indeed. appreciate them. Yeah, it's, I mean, they provide doctors and nurses to almost all over the world. Yes, I yes. Mean, Africa has been beneficiary to that. The entire OECS and CARICOM yeah. have all benefited from, you know, the expertise of Cuban doctors, nurses, engineers, teachers, you name it. Right. And our aim is to, is to build on that. Mm -hmm. Is to build on it and see how we can, you know, um, um, help it benefit the country mm -hmm. as much as possible. Yeah. And, you know, Terry and Grenada, you know, they are, they are, sometimes we take things for granted and sometimes we continue to just operate on one level. But if someone is helping us, you know, we think that, listen, let's evaluate it and let's see how we can make it make sense for both Cuba and Grenada. And in going forward, we can help build that diplomatic tie Mm -hmm. in, in, in order to see real development because there are some things that Cuba are just good in. Yeah. Right? And we as a developing nation need to tap into that. Yeah. Right? And also, there are some things that Cuba may need some assistance with. Mm -hmm. and although we are small, but we can help also. Mm -hmm. So when you really, you know, you bring those, mm -hmm. those um, ties together, you know, it, it makes both of us more powerful. Absolutely. And that so is a real key in this. Yep. Well, yep. the diplomatic friendship which continues to grow is certainly laudable. Yep. And um, congratulations to our foreign minister and also prime minister for making sure that that relationship continues to yes. grow from strength to strength. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Tell us something. What does it feel like being asked to serve as prime acting prime minister? What conjures <laughs> up in your mind whenever you ask to do this well, task? It's always a privilege, not just to be acting prime minister, but to act, you know, for someone who I look up to. Mm -hmm. And that is our prime minister, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, right? And it was because of him that I got involved in politics. Mm -hmm. So when he asked me to serve, you know, for me, it's always a, a big deal. And, uh, you know, and, but Terry, I see, you know, um, I see this rule you know, in a very unique way, you know. Mm -hmm. And let me, let me just bring it back. I think you just said that you came from church. You was running here. Yep. Come yes, from of church. course. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to talk a little Bible for a little while, right? But you know, when in the Bible, 
Christ talk about, you know, serving and so, and being a servant. And I always say that our role as ministers and prime ministers is to serve the people of Greater Kayako and Peter Matnik. Because a government is supposed to be of the people, for the people, and by the, the people. Mm -hmm. So f for me, when I'm asked to serve, or when I'm asked to be acting prime minister, to me, it's just a bigger role, right, um, in terms of servants. And that's it for me. So, yes, you will see me giving my all to ensure that, that people meet and it, are met. You will see me giving my all to, to really, you know, listen to the people and also, but listen to my leader also to know what he wants and how I can help him deliver on, on, on the promises that we all deliver on. Sorry, that we all promise. Mm -hmm. right? The cabinet of Grenada, the ministers himself. So, for me, it's just, uh, you know, I'm just happy to serve the people and mm -hmm. to ensure that, that we do our best to put Grenada forward. Yes, the, uh, there may be some tough decisions that we have to make. Because once you're in this seat, you have to make tough decisions. Sometimes mm -hmm. it may not be the most popular decision, but it may be the best decision for Grenada. And, you know, so, so it's, 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 it's a tough job. But at the end of the day, we put ourselves up for it. And we give our commitment and we ask the people to, to put us there and we will try our best. And for me, it's just about doing my best to move this country forward despite, number one, the thing that divides us the most in terms of politics, the party and so. You know, yes, I always say that, you know, there's a time and place. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, we were back different side because we have different ways of reaching the top. But when we reach to the top, we have to think about the country and how do we unify the country in, 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 in order to move forward. Because if, right. we, if we do not take that approach and we decide to grow a spirit of division, then the country suffers. Mm -hmm. And when the country suffers, then it makes no sense. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, so, you know, um, so Terry, so I'm privileged to, to have this opportunity to serve. And as long as I am given it, this opportunity by the, the Prime Minister, I try to do my best to please him and to please the cabinet and the country in general. Fantastic. Yeah. Wonderful indeed. Well, on this note, uh, we'll take just a short break and we'll be back for more discussion on this and other matters. Back with you in a moment. Right. I've never been unemployed in my life. And I've never been unemployed because as a youth, there was always employment in agriculture. So when I grew up, I grew up going to the estates or to the farms with my grandmother. When I became a teenager, and I wanted to dress nicely, I knew I would not get any money from any parent or family. If you wanted to be fancy, I had to go up to the mountains, pick up the nutmegs, clean the nutmegs, separate the mace, put the nutmegs in the bags, and take it to the nutmeg pool in Tebaid in St. David. I was doing this even when I was in Presentation Brothers College. And even after leaving Presentation Brothers College, because agriculture provided a ready means of earning a living, a ready means of income. And it is still the case today. But our education system has not really placed emphasis or sufficient emphasis on agriculture and ensuring that our youth have the skill sets, the mindset, and I'm saying mindset here, to see agriculture as an attractive career, as an attractive business, and to some extent, while governments over the years have provided several incentives for agriculture, it is often in an ad hoc, uh, disjointed and uncoordinated manner that really focuses on after you become a farmer, not incentivizing you to become a farmer. And so this Youth in Agriculture Initiative and the opening of this project office marks what we believe is a significant pilot project that should become the norm, not just in Grenada, but throughout our CARICOM member states where we are struggling with ensuring that we can get young people involved in the agriculture sector. Welcome back to all our listeners and viewers of the NDC Heartbeat Podcast. Uh, all those who are on FM, Vibes FM, Spice Capital Radio, Talk Grenada, and now right along in Brooklyn, New York, and 100.5 FM, Labe FM Radio out in Greenville. Welcome back to the Heartbeat. And um, we were chatting with Minister 
who has responsibility for MIT. He's also acting prime minister. There has been talk about Project 500. Right. You want to just give us an update on that, and then we go into the other projects that are ongoing? Well, during the campaign, we were speaking about building 500-plus affordable houses for Canadians. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are grateful to the Chinese for helping us with the project that they had. Mm -hmm. um, their style is sort of different to the style that we are accustomed to as Canadians. And we wanted to, you know, to give Canadians a chance to really um, have our kind of housing, mm -hmm. basically. So it was a campaign promise and we intend to deliver on that promise. And it basically to build, as I said, 500 affordable housing. Mm -hmm. In doing so, we have looked at different methods. One of the biggest costs in really in the construction process of a house is labor. Mm -hmm. And around the world today, they have, they have ways to really build houses and to cut down on the labor, which is cut down, to cut down on your major cost. Mm -hmm. In doing so, you can build houses and it can be more affordable because now you have just decreased your your well your, your highest cost of production yeah and basically so project 500 is a project that will be geared towards um building over 500 houses in our tenure and it can take the form it can take two forms we have identified lands already that we will clear mm -hmm. put in the infrastructure mm -hmm. and also get it ready to, to build those houses on. Right. And we are going to take the approach where we are going to do our research and get the most affordable method or methods mm -hmm. so we can, you know, put houses on those lands and we can make it available to the people of Greener Caribou and Peter Matnik. Also, Terry, the, another interesting thing about this project is that if you have lands, mm -hmm and <coughs> you want to build a structure on it. It can also take the form where we will build, take those same units and build it on your land. Mm -hmm. In doing so, you know, know you can have a house where normally a, a two-bedroom house may cost $200,000, $300,000. The aim is to let you have a same two-bedroom house or three-bedroom house for maybe half or 60% of the cost of a mm -hmm. normal house. Right. Right. And in doing that, we can cater for young professionals mm -hmm. and people from different income brackets. Mm -hmm. People who, who, who's working, who's renting, mm -hmm. and they want to make it by, and if they can lower their rent costs and so, mm -hmm. and we can give them something to, you know, um, to go by and to, um, to own, mm -hmm. then we can be in improving the housing stock in Grenada, right. number one. Number two, we can make it more sustainable. Number three, we can cater for people who are paying high rent and would love to own or to have their own. Number three, or number four, sorry. Now we can even improve the housing stock, not just in St. George's, but through the length and breadth of Grenada. So that when we intend to, to bring infrastructure projects and to, to do development in those areas, we have housing that we can you know, tap into. And that's the aim. So Project 500 is a really you know, important project, a project that will help the citizens of Grenada really, you know, um, um, or put them in a, in a position that, that they can own their, their own, sorry, their homes mm -hmm. and to make it more feasible for them. Right. Now, let me just go one step further. Sometimes we look at housing as something simple, but it's not simple. Hmm. Some people work their whole life just to own a house or a property. And if we can make it easier for people, now Terry, you're talking about you don't have to work your whole life mm -hmm. to own a home. And in doing so, we can help you to experience a better standard, standard of living right. Right, in the process. And when you're talking about investments, you can use your, um, your property as a means of investment to improve your life and your, your economic situation. So we see it as something that we really want to push forward with. And in doing so, we can help Grenadians gain equity 
and improve the standard of living in the process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, housing has always been a major issue for all governments. Yeah. And it is commendable uh, on this administration to have made such a commitment to the people of Grenada to start off with 500 houses during the term of your tenure. Yeah. Um, that is a massive, massive commitment to the people of Grenada. Yes. And hopefully your second term, it will be hopefully not just 500, maybe 1,000. Right. Because how the demand for housing continues every single day. Yes. And let me add to that too, because some people may think that, hey, you're only dealing with the Chinese housing and uh, you're talking about putting 500 now. But we're also giving housing assistance, Terry, mm -hmm. to a lot of Canadians, a mm -hmm. lot. And sometimes we don't talk about it and we don't, um, you know, uh, advertise it as much. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, in the South alone, in my constituency, we gave assistance to over 200 persons last wow. year wow. in terms of people who have the houses and they needed assistance. Mm -hmm. And you have all the other con constituencies that we also help. Because sometimes, not sometimes, but you have people in society that may not be able to afford. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, and what do we do? So as a government, we have a housing assistance program and we should reach out to help people. Yes, um, as ministers, we would like it to, you know, to, to operate in a much faster manner. Um, it's something that we talk about every day. But I can tell you that as it is now, we are helping a lot of people. I'm talking about poor people I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They may not be able to afford materials to really, you know, um, improve you know, their, their, their housing situation. Mm -hmm. We are doing that. So we are helping <coughs> the people who cannot afford. We are making it possible for young professionals and people from various income bracket, as much as low as the minimum wage bracket, mm -hmm. to be able to own a property in right. their life. Mm -hmm. And we also have the ones for the middle income bracket. So we have, as a government, we are trying to cater for all income levels. Mm -hmm. And we see it as an important aspect in improving the lives of our people. Absolutely, because yeah. um, when you look at <coughs> housing development over the, let's say, the past 30 years, what we've been giving out is lumber. Yeah. And you see the effects that <laughs> a lot of homes have suffered with fires and so forth. Yeah. Are we going to start the process of slowly, well, maybe not slowly, but moving into concrete structures where at least fires would not become a major, major loss for many families over the years? Yes. So, but not just concrete, there are other... Yeah, materials. Materials yeah. too. Yeah, quite right? true. Right. So not just the concrete, but yes, we are looking at it. We are actually reviewing it now because coming into office, we... Realize that the program that was there was only catered for bone, yeah, the board house and yeah. wood and lumber. Yeah, wooden houses. No insurance will not really insure mm -hmm. those properties. Yeah. So, uh, so immediately, people are having homes without insurance, and the home and there's a fire, and then they are left, you know, without and they are left hanging. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, Terry, I can tell you that. Listen, I know about fires. I had a fire on the Moira Chapari, which my business got destroyed. Our family had a fire in 1995, where our whole house got destroyed. And Terry, I can tell you, on both occasions, I had no, I got no assistance from government. Wow. None whatsoever. There was a man called Winston White. Mm -hmm. I went to his funeral some weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he came to my parents, and he, and he was, he got donations of some sort for us, mm -hmm. and I'll be ever thankful to Winston White for that. Mm -hmm. But we got no assistance from government whatsoever. Wow. Not today. I am part of this administration. And we are trying our best to help fire victims. Mm -hmm. I also want to thank people of the diaspora and people in Grenada also, who, once they hear a fire, they are willing to help. Yep. They will collect donations, they will do this, they will get food items, clothes, they will... You know, some people are just... Listen, we have a lot of lovely people in, on this island. And so today I, I'm seeing people getting help when they have a fire. Now I'm saying, we have to start to really educate and to move upwards in terms of, you know, moving from just the boat structure, to a structure that, that insurance will <coughs> really um, include as part of their package, 
So in the case of, of a fire and someone is not there, you have a backup plan mm -hmm. that, could, that could help you so that you, so that you will not go down. Because imagine, Terry, someone who, have, have a lower, who, who gets a lower income than you and I. They are able to build a property, let's say, a boat structure. And that's through, through the lifetime. And one fire just destroyed. It's like you go back to square one again. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. we can help them see different methods, and that's what Project 500 caters for too. Yeah. Different methods that insurance and so can now um, take as part of their package. Mm -hmm. We can help people safeguard against fires and all these things, the hurricanes yeah. and so, you know. So, yes, we are looking at it. And Project 500 will also cater for part of that. So we have some good things to come. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, that's great. And um, on this note, let me just, you know, extend thanks and appreciation to the diaspora, as you just shared, yes. for the outpouring of support for the families suffered who suffered losses out in St. Patrick. And then only just yesterday um, in Boucherjou, yes, Boucherjou, there was a fire. In Springs, there yes. was another fire. Yes. So, yes. you know, our condolences and of course our empathy goes out to these folks for their losses and so forth yeah. it's really tough must be a heavy burden on government to yeah. rebuild and this is why project 500 will look at really dealing with this with these issues yes because you know and our approach at the government chair you can look at and Grenada, you can look at how we have approached things we have always tried to improve what we got or what you know we inherited mm -hmm. so you know, and that's just how we operate not just trying to please everyone and giving you the instant yes and instant gratification but as a as an administration we always look at the long term mm -hmm. and some folks may not get it immediately but i can tell you later um later down the line you will understand exactly what we are trying to do Okay. So, yes, we have a house, yes, we have a, a boat house and so, and we will be looking at how can we improve that house, mm -hmm. how can you improve that house, so that you can be in a better position in years to come. Absolutely. Right? Yes, I listen, I, I don't want to venture into it, but even people who do the commerce and the trade, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, as an administration, we can turn a blind eye and just have you doing your thing anyhow, but... You know, in, in, a, in a few months to come, you will, you will see us really rolling out a program mm -hmm. where we can help people who are doing trade along mm -hmm. the city and along everywhere. Right. And we will try to, to, to help them improve their situation so that they can have something more sustainable that they can feed their family. Right. Right. But Terry, in the process of doing that, some may not get it. Yeah. And they might it's say, oh, listen, you hear the cry. Eh? Oh, you know, um, they're not for the poor people. But mind you, if we are trying to help you to, to operate in a more sustainable way, we are for you. But you may not see it exactly. immediately. Yeah. So it takes time. Yes. And uh, so the Prime Minister will, will, will be talking some more about this and in right. the, the months to come. Fantastic. But I can tell you, Terry, our approach is always for you know, the, the ordinary man on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I can give you several examples. I don't know yeah. the commercial break. I don't want to uh, thing here. But we can... Well, and, and, and some <coughs> will speak and say that they are for the poor and their, their idea of being for the poor is given okay. a man who will need $100 today. Oh, to keep them poor. And to keep them poor. So, mm -hmm. so, 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 so they will have to depend on you all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if, if they have to depend on you, you can get a vote all the time. Mm -hmm. But for us, our approach may be a more... Um, uh, maybe approach that well, non political, non political, <laughs> because what we try to do is to help you and help yourself, help to help yeah. yourself. And in doing mm -hmm. so, you don't have to depend on us. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, a man can make his, oh, yeah. you know, he, uh, he can make his decision or make up his mind to go anyway. Yeah. But if we have to really improve Guinea, that's the approach we have to take. Absolutely. Well, on this note, um, we'll take a short break, we'll hear from Minister Lecret as he extend his empathy and concern for the loss of um, uh, two homes okay. in his constituency. Okay. Back in a moment. Okay. Comrade Terry, blessed afternoon. Yes, sir. Uh, around 4 a.m. Uh, Saturday morning, two families in the community of Boucherjou lost uh, their homes. 
due to a ravaging fire. Uh, the PD captain for that polling division, as well as the Boucher Joux St. George Northwest Council members, alerted me um, of the scene that was unfolding along with other members of the community of Boucher Joux. I, uh, upon arrival at the scene, there were a number of community members present engaged in uh, outing of the fire along with the members of the fire department of the Royal Grenada Police Force and we want to thank them for the speedy response in which they responded to the fire that was ravishing the homes of the two families as well as the community members must be commended yes for the heroic presence and the heroic efforts um, that they engaged in in assisting the families in the outing of the fire as well the fire initiated also the response of the st george northwest emergency response team because we do have that team in place and that team immediately began post fire preparations for the family uh, the family lost everything uh, though distraught no lives were lost and for that uh, i believe that everyone we are eternally grateful uh, within 10 hours the family was settled very comfortable and is grateful for the intervention by uh, the team so from my prime minister to my cabinet colleagues the cabinet of ministers and the st george northwest council for human and social development we want to empathize with the two families from Boucheju on the loss of their dwelling quarters and the possessions therein we also want to let them know that as long as Laco is their representative they have nothing to fear and we will build back better they can take that to the bank terry and they can cash it you please have yourself a good afternoon Welcome back to listeners and viewers of the NDC Heartbeat podcast. Um, in studio is the Acting Prime Minister, Andy Williams. Um, Minister, we want to go into the projects that you are pursuing right now. You have Molinaire, you have the fort, and it goes on and on. Right. But before we get there, I'd like you to comment on the statements being made by the opposition that you're only doing their projects. <laughs> How do you respond to this? Well, tell me, let me just say this. And I think that's a, that shows maturity on our part. You know, when I was doing economics, as you, as a, as a matter of fact, Mr. Minister Leonard Andrews taught me economics. Mm. And one of the mistakes that governments make is that once you get into office, the project started by the previous administration, you tend to forget it. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? The country suffers because you have resources being put into it. Right. And the project and so has not been completed. And as a result, you find that there are priorities that are just at a standstill and it goes nowhere. We did not take that approach. We are not a, vindi a vindictive government. Right. So what we did is that as mature as we are, we finish, or we thought it was necessary to finish the project and so that was started. Mm -hmm. And any government coming into office, I can tell you, Terry and Grenada, in the first year, year and a half or so, you will be completing projects by the, the previous administration. Yeah, it's ongoing. Right? And in, in addition, the problem worsened because you had just around the election time a whole series of projects being started. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as government, we tend to try to, you know, to bribe the people by not working in the first three years. And in the last year or so, coming up to election, you see a whole sort of projects on the board being done. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw. So when we came in, we saw, or we had projects and so that was on the books that was started maybe a year before the election and so. So what we did is that we completed the project. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank my cabinet and my prime minister for showing maturity in that respect now
coming into the second half of 2024, 2025, yeah. you, will see, you will see us really um, place a, a, um, efforts into implementing our projects going forward. Right? And I can tell you, one of the big projects you will see is the, the hospital. Right. right. That project, we have located the land, we have paid for the land, we are looking at designs and so. And let's say in the later part of this year into next year, you will see us really pushing for the new hospital. Right. We are also looking at, you know, um, improving agro industries in Grenada. Mm -hmm. Right. In the revolution, we had it. And it's 40 years after the revolution. There's no reason why we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So you will see us making more push at that. Right. And so you will see us even, even strengthening and improving the infrastructure um, of our roads and so in Grenada. Mm -hmm. We have, you have all these narrow roads, right? For example, the, the Cliff Road, we could have gone ahead and do the same road that was there before. When we saw the designs from the previous administration, we could have gone ahead, uh, gone ahead and do it. But Prime Minister said no, ca ca Cabinet said no. If we have to do a road in 2024, it should be able to last us for the future. And we should do a road with a difference, not just put back the same road. Right, so Terry, um, so you, so you will see us not getting a chance mm -hmm. to really, you know, uh, implement our projects now. Mm -hmm. But you know, coming in, we do not want to play the the game of just leaving certain projects there and going to start our own, and at the end of the day, the country suffers. Mm -hmm. So if someone is really thinking, you know, um, reasonable, they will not make that statement. And anyone making that statement is someone that does not understand how governments work, yep. basically. But in addition to which, the funding agencies who provide the funding for such projects, when they are ignored or they are cast aside for political reasons, right. it gives the country a bad reputational yes. position. Yes, and let me just say this. I don't want to get into that, but, but I'll say it. You're hearing that what the, pro the project that we are doing are NMP projects. But Terry, I can tell you, look at the UK SIF uh -huh. of 80 million EC dollars a grant yep. since 2016. Grant money. Right? Now, you had that money on your books for six years, did nothing. We just came into office in a year and some months, and we are already starting to implement the project. Do, do you take credit for that? Or do you give us credit for that? Because I can tell you this, Terry, when the Prime Minister and I was negotiating to get back the monies for that project, it was said that if it was the NMP administration, they was not going to give back the money. We got 70 out of $80 million, mm -hmm. right? And today we have signed, we have, and now is in train to start that project. Right. That project will help improve um, the distribution of, of water to all the south of the island and other places. And, you know, so when you hear people want to take credit for certain things, then, you know, if you want to take credit for it, well, just implement it. Right? Precisely. You know, Terry, I could be speaking all year about what I want to do for Grenada, and I make a step. Do I take credit if you come and do it now? Exactly. You know, so that's my thing on this, Terry. So we are not a government who just talk, talk, talk. We are government who act. And when mm -hmm. you look at... You know, the, let's look at Kayaku, for instance. That monk that Minister Tevin Andrews is doing in Kayaku. Mm -hmm. I think that has been the most I've ever seen a minister work in Kayaku over yep. my lifetime. Yeah, yes, yeah, certainly. Right? Accomplished quite a lot so yes. far. Right, and let me just go into this. We are going to embark on a project now because we want to really empower our youths. We see Kayaku after just finished. Mm -hmm. And when you see Grenada, the athletes already perform among the, the Jamaica and the Trinidad and so we only a dot on the map. Yep. These places are established and they have more resources than us. Mm -hmm. So we think that we have to give the youths more opportunity in terms of sports. Mm -hmm. So for example, you see the Grand School that we just refurbished, the basketball court and so right. If Every night you will see, you will see children I, or, uh, and young people are playing and really, you know, um, you know, I'm getting involved in basketball netball, mm -hmm. right? The, the tennis one we just after a little more to do on the, the tennis and we'll start the tennis. But even Monouge again, mm -hmm. you just had the intersector 
cricket competition just finishing last Friday. Yeah. And when you saw... I saw a hell of a crowd there. I was wondering <laughs> what was taking place there. You, you know? understand what? You know? So, yeah. um, Monish was one of the, the main passions that we had there and it, it, it was not lit. And now that we light Monish, you can have people playing uh, cricket and whatever sports in the mm -hmm. night. And you can come home, have a shower, relax, and then come back out and, and enjoy a game. Or you can play. Right, and sometimes you don't you want to exercise, you want to do certain things, and you don't have the time to do it. But mm -hmm. no, you don't have to worry, to worry about time because the, the lights are there, and we and we make the lights available for people as they wish. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we will be doing coming up, and I have to thank the minister of sports, of sports for that. That's Senator Lacret. We will be looking at the basketball, tennis, netball, and various pastures throughout. We need a Kayaku and PD Matnik. Mm -hmm. And we are going to refurbish all of them. Yeah. Right? And not just refurbish, but we are going to plan competitions mm -hmm. so that you can have more people getting involved in sports. Right. And we think that's one way that we can help the youth to channel their energy mm -hmm. going forward. Absolutely. Now, let's, let's, sometimes when it's bad, we tend to talk about it, but let's talk about it. We have had last man standing. We have had the competition being open on, sorry, the court being open. That's Granite's Court. Um, we had about three set of activities on the court. And Terry, I can tell you, Grenada, there was not one sign of violence. Mm -hmm. Not it's, one sign. It's encouraging. You see? And that's what we need to do. We need to help the youths and other people to channel the energy into something positive. Absolutely. Right? And when we do that, we can help build a better Grenada. So if there mm -hmm. are those who will talk about the crime situation and so on, and, and, and Grenada, but there are those who will act. Mm -hmm. And my government is one who will act. So St. Patrick, St. David, St. Andrew, all over. Kariko and Pili Matnik, you will see us coming mm -hmm. and to improve the, the sporting facilities on a national level throughout. Great. Well, yeah. I understand that a number of playing fields in St. Andrew's area, etc., St. Patrick, they've been lit up, which is, you know, really good for the youth out in those communities. Yes. And let me just say that you know the last administration did some lighting also mm -hmm. right and and again we are not a, a vindictive government so we saw the need for it and we continue yeah, yeah. right the and project we made, is good it's good exactly we get it done exactly and we made improvements mm -hmm. right and terry i just spoke about the crime situation and really providing alternatives for our people mm -hmm. to channel the energy right just last week I took a walk with the RGPF on the Granite Beach mm -hmm. and on the BBC Beach. And we are going to do that throughout We need a Kayako and Pidimadi again. Right. And the thought is that we can put some more lights on the beach to make it more safe. Lighting, okay. yes. especially on Granite's Beach. On really Granite, yes. Be much we, appreciated. We want to make it more safe for our people and, our, and foreigners too. And we are also going to put cameras on those solar lights. Mm hmm Right, because you know, we are, you know, Grenada is we are trending. Everyone wants to come to Grenada, and we want to make it more safe for yep. everyone. Absolutely. And you know, um, national security, if it's compromised, it can affect mm -hmm. your economic everything. activity and everything. Everything. So we see the need and the importance for that, and we are going to um, start a process of upgrading the security aspect in Grenada. Mm -hmm. We also want to talk to businesses also who <coughs> have cameras. And we can have a relationship, a relationship with them, right? So that going forward, if let's say the police also need some footage, mm -hmm. that we can access their cameras to get it also. Yeah. And you know, yes, we are a safe place. There's maybe the safest in the world, mm -hmm. but, but but we don't want to take that for granted. Yep. And part of the transmission process is to ensure that um, the country is something is just too dark. It needs yeah. a, a little more light. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right? right, and then we have the SU again, the St. George's University, which we want to protect. We have our people who we want to protect. We have the foreigners who are coming who we want to protect. And tourism has been on the rise mm -hmm. for the last two years. The, 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 the hotels could tell you that they have seen dramatic improvement on the occupancy rate and so on. And we want to keep that there. Yep, absolutely yes. so indeed. Yes. Well, we're going to take a short break. We're going to hear from Minister of Health who is going to be talking about a vexing issue about pig farming waste. Right. And he will be making recommendations as to how we can move towards solving that issue. So back with you in a moment. Over the past few months, 
the Ministry of Health has received several complaints from residents of people operating pig farms close to villages, densely populated, as well as close to waterways. We have requested of the Division of Environmental Health to examine the situation and to report back to management so that proper decisions can be taken. We believe that residents have a right to operate a business, but in a way that is safe and does not pose a direct threat to the health of individuals and to the environment. As citizens, we have a responsibility to protect our beloved and beautiful island and to protect the environment within which we live. We also recognize that as residents, we want to enjoy our beautiful Grenada. And whether it's a pig farm, whether it's loud barking dogs, whether it's a chicken farm, or any other entity operating that creates discomfort to residents, one must take cognizance that if you have a right to operate a business, then you also have a responsibility to operate in such a way that it does not adversely affect the neighbors. So, over the next few weeks and months, environmental health will be paying visits to these farm, farmers and working out a solution towards this vaccine issue. We understand that these problems cannot be fixed overnight. But there are problems that exist in our society that must be managed. The reality is that Grenada must be an orderly, decent, well-organized society if we have to prosper in the way that we envisage. If we have rules and regulations, then we must embrace them. And this is how society grows and flourishes. We have a right to clean, fresh air. And clean, fresh air is one of the first steps towards a healthy population. And as everyone knows, that there are a number of non-communicable diseases that currently plague our society. And in order to overcome this, we must look seriously, inwardly, at our lifestyle, at our practices, at our environment, and take firm decisions as to how we restructure the way we live, our environmental practices, our own hygiene, our exercise programs to be able to combat some of these diseases. So starting with environmental health, we will develop a program of activities to tackle some of these challenges. We are therefore asking for the cooperation of all farmers and neighbors. We want you to continue operating your business. So we want to be very clear about that. We, we are not anti-business. We want you to continue to operate but we must find solutions to problems. And if there is a problem of discomfort to our neighbors, as long as it is reasonable and justifiable, 
we must find solutions to it. And this is our responsibility as, as leaders. So environmental health will be visiting the farmers and would be asking to take certain corrective measures to address some of these problems. Welcome back to all our listeners and viewers of the NDC Heartbeat podcast. Uh, Minister, we spoke quite a bit other matters. What is happening with the WASH program okay. right now? Give us an update on that. Not the WASH is a very interesting program. It's water, access, and sanitation in homes. That's mm -hmm. what the WASH is all about. And the WASH program is where we, we, we made some improvements to the normal bathroom and toilet program. Mm -hmm. not, not <laughs> now before I go ahead, Terry, someone was from the other side was arguing with me that WASH is the same bathroom and toilet program. And I just say to them, I say, listen to this. Let's take, for example, St. George's. Grand Dance is part of St. George's or mm -hmm. St. George. Mm -hmm. But Grand Dance is not St. George. Mm -hmm. So let me put it in, into context now. Bathroom and toilet is part of the WASH program. But Bachiman Toilet is not the WASH program. It's not the okay. WASH goes much further than that. Mm -hmm. you, you know, since the NDC time, the previous NDC time, we had a Bachiman Toilet program time. Now, what happened, Terry, is that we saw that people were given Bachiman Toilet under the previous administration and so on. But you're giving someone a Bachiman Toilet and they have no access to water. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. you're, so you're watching the bathroom and, and, and the toilet <laughs> and, and, no water you, coming and through water it. coming through <laughs> so what we did last November we went to cabinet and we passed a bill that um, that, that would enable everyone to get water connection basically because before if you did not own the land you, you, you could not get a connection yep. now even though you don't own the land what we're saying is that um Tell me, even though we have to go, when you come onto the land, you will be getting the land with these things already on it. Mm -hmm. So that should not inhibit someone from getting a connection. And water is essential. Water is not a want, but a need. Mm -hmm. Right? Water is life. Right. So as part of the WASH initiative, we pass that bill so that we can, everyone can have access to water. And the idea is that we, we're going to do the bathroom and the toilet and give you a chance to have access to water also. Uh, in that mm -hmm. sense, Terry, that can really help you mm -hmm. to, to really improve your standard of living and your health situation and name it all. You have some people have to be going down by standpipes mm -hmm. and ju juggling it up on, all, all up on hills and so yep. for water because they have no, no connection. And we are going to change that. Mm -hmm. So the Prime Minister did a pilot project in, Be um, in Belisle mm -hmm. and I was really happy to see what was done. And Terry, the people there, the idea is to eradicate, is to eradicate the outside bathroom and toilet. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I see that, I say, hear what? I'm going to start the wash in the valley, continue to monto, and through the length and the breadth of the south. Mm -hmm. But other constituencies too will, um, will take on that same wash project, which we will help to eradicate um, all the outside bathroom and toilet and give people a chance to access running water and clean water. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you, sometimes we take these things for granted. Yeah. But about 10% of the population have no access to clean water. Yeah. And what are you doing? There are villages where, where you have no pipes and so on. And if, if you don't have that, it means that you, that, that you will be encouraging outside toilets and so as a government. Mm -hmm. What about the stench and, and all these things that will be coming from that community? Yeah. So we cannot feel, or we will not feel satisfied and comfortable to have people living like that in Grenada. Mm -hmm. And again, you really care about the ordinary man, then do something to help him. And we have done just that. And Absolutely. Tell you, let me just say this, because you know, I, I, feel, I feel a need on my heart to say it. You know, some people talk about this administration, we don't like the poor. The, the most amount of money that was transferred from government to the people in any time in Grenada, but during 20, in 2022, when we paid the pension. Yep. Terry, you remember that Grenada. You remember. <laughs> I mm -hmm. want to go back there, but I'll yeah. go back there. Go there. Because sometimes we have to appreciate it. You remember that a certain individual said, if 
we pay the pension. Mm -hmm. The country is going to collapse. Yep. The social program will collapse. Yep. He called the North Prime Minister, don't, mm -hmm. if we paid the pension. Mm -hmm. We paid the pension. What happened? Did the country collapse? Did we stop all social programs? Not at all. We are still going. Mm -hmm. Right? Let's go again. The same dark salaries, money that was dark from the teachers and so, Terry, that, and the teachers are ordinary people. The first job I had was teaching. Mm -hmm. I can tell you it's not an easy job. Oh. Outside of a job, you still have to be working outside of a job. Mm -hmm. And we, when we came in, we made the payment to the teachers, Terry. Let's go again. Education. If you're talking about poverty and you want to eradicate poverty, one of the, the most efficient way or the best way of eradicating poverty is through education. Mm -hmm. You heard our Prime Minister said when he was growing up, he had to use latrine. Yep. Now he went and he got himself educated, come back to Grenada, and he was one of the, the best lawyers that, that we had. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he was representing country, I'm sorry, companies like uh, Grenada Breweries, SGU, mm -hmm. yeah. Grenada, the biggest countries, I'm sorry, the, the biggest companies yep. on the island. Mm -hmm. Now we have removed the tuition fee from Nulo and Tam City mm -hmm. to make it more affordable so that more students can go in and get a better education, and not just in the academic, but also in the skills. Mm -hmm. If you check last year, it, Tam City had record-breaking numbers in terms of people being admitted. Let's go again. The same water connection. You love the people who you say are ordinary and poor so much. But mm -hmm. over the years, you do nothing for them in order to improve their living situation where a man needs water mm -hmm. to flush his toilet and to drink and to care for his young baby and just name it, Terry. Mm -hmm. Let's go again. Affordable housing. Now, you depended on China to come in to build some units for us. And then in phase one. And in phase two, you have to, to depend on China again. When we came in, we said, but no. You know, <laughs> um, someone gave you something, but it's time now for you not to use your brain and your resources to try to stand on your own. So with the new agreement that we have now, Terry, we don't have to depend on China to give us our phase three. And always have to be, to be dependent on someone. But now we can build phase three for ourselves mm -hmm. with the new arrangement. And thanks to the Minister of Health, who was the Minister of Community um, Dev Development, which was mm -hmm. Philip Tillerson, mm -hmm. and his team for really taking that approach. But I'm saying, Terry, you're talking about someone who, have, who is for the poor. We, Terry, have shown, not just by words yep. and by gimmicks and tricks, but we, are we have shown by our decisions and our policies that we are putting in place. And... Um, that, that what we are doing is really and truly um, is for the ordinary man. And I want to just see that, Terry. I just yep. got a little no, that, that, That's great. Well, yeah. you know something? We have run out of time. But hold on. But we will continue. Hold on. So hold let on. me just say two, goodbye. Two seconds. Two. Hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. We will continue. <laughs> but okay. I want to say goodbye to those who are on radio. Right. Because there's an automatic oh, cutoff. Okay. 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 So to thank those who joined us on WFM, Vibes FM, Spice Capital Radio. We will continue on with this conversation. And um, of course, thankfully, uh, the new station 100.5 Labe FM okay. is online. So okay. we'll continue with them and also ride along. Right. And we also on Facebook through the NDC Facebook page and YouTube. So let us continue with this conversation <laughs> as we <laughs> said goodbye to WFM and Vice FM. Okay. So as I was saying, I was just, <coughs> I just wanted to make that point. Because for me as an individual, even when I was in business, my aim was not really to make a profit on all these things. Terry. Yes, you know, you, you do business to make a profit. But my heart is really for, you know, the ordinary man. So people will tell us stories that, listen, we came in hotspot and we buy goods and we are short money and, and they say just go ahead, you know. Mm -hmm. um, people wanted some donation for something and go ahead, fire victims, go ahead, just name it. Because, Terry, my heart is for the ordinary man. Not everyone can afford, not everyone have the privilege. Sometimes situations in our life may, may be different. That you may, have a, you may have been in a promising situation, but because of circumstances, you tend to fall back. Right? Mm -hmm. So, when I see policies being put into place, and it benefits the ordinary man, I'm happy with that. 
But one thing I don't like do, tell you, I don't like when people willfully just take on an agenda mm-hmm. to fool the people of Greater Kaiko and PD yep. So for example, you have, you know, <laughs> Terry, I think when we spoke last and I said, Terry, I wouldn't talk about that. But I'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. You see people getting paid to go on radio p- program all the time. They're getting paid mm-hmm. just to come up with negatives to fool the people of yeah. Greater Caricom and Pedematic. When they see they can get this administration on what we on the, the <coughs> facts, then they, they, they start to you know to attack personalities. Mm-hmm. You know, and all you're doing is listen, before I joined NDC. I used to criticize the NDC and, uh, um, by saying, don't tell me about Keith Mitchell. Tell me what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And now I'm seeing the same thing around. Right? You, you know, so you have, you have all these programs and so on, Facebook and this and that. They are getting paid. Mm-hmm. They are getting paid to just run down this administration. And I'm saying, what does it benefit you? At the end of the day, Terry, you and I should be ready for country. Yep. We should be trying to build this country. I have a son. I have a daughter. I want him to live in a Grenada that is a better place. I would love for them when they're growing up that they can access college and town CC and not pay their tuition. It's easier for me. And, it, and it's easier for the ordinary man on the street who cannot afford it also. Right? I will want the smallest man or the, the man who's working for minimum wage to be able to get a water connection, to get water to his house. Mm-hmm. Clean water, affordable water. I will want Terry... Um, for the government to do so, to do something for the family that cannot afford to have a bathroom and toilet in their house mm-hmm. and, and to give them the water with it also. I would like Terry for my mother or my neighbor who worked with government uh, so that, so that um, we put in a situation that they can get a pension. I would love that Absolutely. and not be tying people into poverty. Exactly. You see, and when we need to think in a certain way, you have a brain, you can see what's happening. And it is your responsibility to think in a certain manner based on what you have seen. But <coughs> let, us, let us put things into its correct perspective. Those who are spreading this false narrative, they're forgetting that the individual who is requesting the false narrative has been there for 23 years. Right. More than enough time to put this country on a strong economic, social, cultural foundation. Yeah. And you saying you want to come back to do what? What's new are you going to bring to the table? Right. So people need to start thinking. If you give a man an opportunity to drive a bus, he bang it up, he break it up, he go on vacation. He want to come back to drive the same bus again? Right. Where you want to write it off now? (laughs) You see, and and let me just just, just add to the point because what we are doing in a lot of the cases is fixing. Right? And you want to talk talk about the police force? As the Prime Minister said, you, over the years, you built a force where there is no continuation. There's no continuation. But it is parallel to that party? Right. There is no, oh, there's never <laughs> been no futuristic planning. Right. Right. And, and Terry, let me go further again. Over the years, we, we have seen our politicians, our politicians, the conditions being, you know, is very deplorable. Mm-hmm. And we are in government now, and we are addressing those matters. Exactly. And we, are, we, have, not done, we have not been there for two years yet, but we are addressing all those. So we don't have to come in. <laughs> And fix. This is the fix it government. Fix implementation. <laughs> fix conditions. <laughs> right? Fix all these things and still implement our ideas at the same time. Yeah. Right? So, so folks, you know, sometimes we have to keep it real. And I am one who loves to keep it real. But I'm saying we are committed to mm-hmm. this country. That is why we as an, um, as an administration don't really pay too much time to really attack and to, to go down that road. And to attack personalities, and so we don't do that. Uh, what, if you look at our approach, what we do, we we know what the mission is, and we are set on achieving the mission, and we are trying our best, you know, to put our efforts forward to do just that. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you might see us not answering to these things and not, you know, really paying attention to these things. It's not because we are not seeing it; it's it because we understand. If we take our efforts now 
and put towards these things. After our four, five years in office, what will, what will we tell you, the people of Guinea, Kayako, and Piri Matni? So yeah. the idea is, is for us to channel our energy. That, that is why Minister Tevin Andrew is doing such a wonderful job in Kayako. And our, and our ministers also mm -hmm. are doing such a wonderful job because we are pushing. Sometimes we, you know, we, have, we have to admit that we are not where we want to be, but we understand the situation um, when we came into office, what we met. And it is our duty now not to make excuses, but to, to, to sit down mm -hmm. and move these things forward. But in addition to all of that, yeah, I mean, the World Bank, for on two consecutive terms, have recognized the economic progress that this administration is making. Yes. And showing futuristic economic expansion. Yes. And, I mean, this is unreal or unheard of. Yes. Of a, a brand new young government. Yes. And again, we are committed. Now, let me just show you a case in point. I will tell you about that because I see mm -hmm. you making some things about it. That I asked Prime Minister, as a Prime Minister, um... This police stuff and the, the police stuff and all these funds and so that was that we saw um, um, happened, and all these phony contracts and so that we saw. Are you going to, you know, to attack the opposition on it? And the prime minister was that, Andy, if we spend our time doing that, when our year, our term is up, what will we tell the people of Greater Kayako and Pity Martin? Very wise words. You understand? And when I heard that, I said, you know what, Andy. It is your duty to push as, as much as possible. And as, and as a minister of implementation, Terry, I can tell you that I <coughs> go to sleep, I eat, I drink, implementation. Mm -hmm. right? What excites me tomorrow is knowing that I have work to do, I have some projects to take care of that will change the lives of, of our people. That excites me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I lead with the prime minister, I lead with our cabinet ministers, and they say, they see what they want done, what they want assistance with. And I, I always put myself out to ensure that I try to help my colleagues as much as possible. Fantastic. And our cabinet is, listen, we are like brothers and sisters. We are, we are united. Wonderful. Right? We may have a little harsh words now. And two minutes, you see us hugging up. Absolutely. Right? That's how we are. So, and again, let me just end by saying I'm proud to be part of this team. And our leader is, trust me, I, we could not ask for a better leader. Yeah, and is blessed at this you know, time. Just, just some two days ago, someone asked me if I believe in God. <laughs> and just getting involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Terry, I can tell you, I had no intentions. But I got a little vision. Mm -hmm. And even before we won, I knew that we, I knew that we would have won the election. Mm -hmm. And our Prime Minister is one who, um, I can tell you, Terry, you know, this, this is his time. Yep. Right. He's supposed to be here at this time. Destiny. And he he is a very smart person and his wisdom is second to none. And I always try to learn from him as much as possible. And you know, and I can tell you on, on our team we know that there is one leader. And the difference with him and the others that was there before is that he don't have to be have a, a stick in his hand to rule. Mm -hmm. He ruled by his, his, by his respect mm -hmm. that he gives to us and his humbleness. Mm -hmm. And we are all obligated um, as ministers to really follow his lead. And so far, he has not led us down the wrong road. Great. Yeah. On this note, we'll just take a short break to hear from Minister Talaswad um, on the loss of one of his compatriots, uh, the house out in Springs. Right. So we'll just take that in shortly. Back in a moment. I am deeply saddened by the loss sustained by individuals losing their homes today due to fire. And especially Mr. Leslie Bain, who worked at the brigade in Springs, St. George's. I'm deeply saddened by his loss. It is not easy to lose one's personal belongings, especially in this very challenging time. It's of deep concern to me. 
I want to assure you, Mr. Bain, that I am out on government business and I will be returning home on Sunday. And my team and I will endeavor to reach out to you and the family with a view to start in the process of rebuilding. I want to encourage you to keep strong, keep the faith, and know that we are your support. See you soon. Take care. Limes. Welcome back to the NDC Heartbeat Podcast. Uh, we're just about going to be closing down very shortly, um, but we'll take a five minutes just to hear the final words from Acting Prime Minister Andy Williams. And let me ask if you can give us a quick update on the Molinet project, um, Fort George, and whatever else you wish to close on. Well, uh, let me just start with the Molinet because, you know, as we know that, it was an unfortunate situation of the oh, last, yes. last week. Mm -hmm. It really touched my heart. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I spoke to the gentleman wife. I went by her. Mm -hmm. Myself, a few other ministers, we went by her. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really sad, yep. Terry, I can Terry. tell you. And the people on the work, they were really trying to push the work as much as fast. Mm -hmm. They were trying to push and so And um, they explained to me how it happened. And it was very unfortunate, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing about life. Tell you sometimes, I don't know what will happen when I leave here mm -hmm. at this moment, you know. Yep. Um, so you really have to sometimes thank God for, for us being here. Mm -hmm. And also we have to trust him that if he make a decision, he is God. Mm-hmm. Right, but um, my condolences is reach out to the family. I know he, he has um, a daughter and so, you know, yes. daughters. And I just want to see that from government, you know, we are really saddened mm -hmm. by this. And I just want to assure the family that any assistance that is needed, we are here to provide any assistance mm -hmm. needed. Uh, right. Great. Also, okay. in my constituency, uh, and I see the situation again, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, condolences goes out to the family of those mm -hmm. young men. Death is never an easy thing. My father died, and all of someone, someone or people will say, "Accept my sympathy." Hmm. Terry, I can tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy. So again, to the family, you know, um, we are really saddened about it. And one of their parents live in my constituency, who I'm very close to, mm -hmm. right? And she lives in the lines. Yep. And you know, so. In this time, we have to ask for strength for the families to keep up because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's young men who had all their lives in front of them. Yeah. Basically, had the whole life in front of them. You know, so sad. Indeed. Well, right. Thanks for your condolences to those who lost their life tragically over the past couple of weeks. Right. Right. So, so what is happening in Moliné now? What's the right. latest on it? Well... Terry, I just want to say, with respect to the families, um, I wouldn't want to comment on the morning. Okay. Yeah, just for for respect. Yes. Okay. From I mean, a time of morning, yeah. I don't want to, you know. To Very well. Um, the but of course, for that also. Yes. So his life did not go in vain. No. No. It's part of Grenada's history now. Yes. No, the Fort George is going along quite well, and uh, the guys are in a, at the construction stage now, where they are starting to build some of the. The, the restaurants and, uh, and all these things that we want to put up there. Uh -huh. So our aim is to get it ready before October 19th. Okay. So that we can, uh, we all can go up there and see the progress that's made and everything. Wonderful. Because we know that, that that's, a that's a historic site. Oh, yeah. And to me, that would be one of the biggest tourism sites that we will have mm -hmm. yeah. on, 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 on this island. Wow. You know, and I guess, and again, that project was on the book since 2017, <laughs> only started in so January. So in other words, you had dirty water in the pipe. Right. For you to get fresh water, you must push out the dirty water. That's the point, you know. No disrespect to the project. Right. But if you don't push things, nothing happens. That's it. From 2016, it was on the books. Yeah. The donors must have been extremely upset and irate. But actually, we almost lost the funds. Yeah. 
And you see, this is what people don't understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you must get rid of the existing projects before you can start new ones. Yes. Otherwise, the funding agencies ain't going to bother with no. you. And it will mean now that you will be losing funds to, s- to start with. And number two, when you go back for funds again, they will say, That's well, well you, didn't, you didn't do the first one. You want more? That's it. Forget it. That's it. So, but Terry, these are things that any reasonable person will understand. Mm-hmm. Right? And we have to understand that. So, coming into office, these are some of the things that we have to be, that, that we were faced with. Yeah. And we had to address. And we are addressing them. And it's for the benefit of Grenada, Kayako, and PD Um, You know, so we have the True Blue Road project, which will be starting this year also in a, in a few months. We mm-hmm. wanted to start it. True Blue contributes a lot to the GDP oh, yeah. of Grenada. Um, and, you know, when sometimes when some people come in here, all they see is the True Blue Road. Mm-hmm. If you want to talk about tourism, you have to take the, the, the tourism that you get when people come and spend the vacation, but also check the educational tourism too, which you get from SGU. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so sometimes a student's view of Grenada is their, is, is their interaction. The immediate environment. <laughs> and they, exactly. So we, have, so we will be working on that. It's a road that was not done in, in, in years, and we, we will not be doing it. And so even the Cliff Project, again, as, as I said, you know, we are, some more thought was put into the project where we tried to eliminate the sharp corners mm-hmm. and we widened the road so that sometimes right. certain parts of the road, only one vehicle could have passed, but now we make it in a way that two vehicles could pass and even, you know, in thing. So we are working and what we will be doing is as fast as we are doing stuff, we will be putting it out there mm-hmm. so that people can see. We have some town halls coming up and we will be telling the people about our plans and right. what we have in store for, for them. Mm-hmm. So, so I say, rest assured, we have a plan, and we are working towards our plan. Mm-hmm. But in doing that, we have to get rid of some of the things that was there before in, mm-hmm. in, in order to start what we have coming. That's right. So, right? So one more thing, Terry, I can just tell you that. You know, we promised regularization. Mm-hmm. But, Terry, we are not a government that will do things wild and foolish. Right? We promised regularization, and what we want to do first is to reform the pension and then start to regularize. Mm-hmm. So I say to everyone, we made a promise, we are, we are going to keep it. Just have a little patience because we are doing things the mm-hmm. correct way mm-hmm. and in a way that will be more sustainable and it will benefit everyone at the end of the day. So we have a plan and we are you know, implementing that plan as we right. go along. So Grenada, have confidence in us. We will deliver as we are mm-hmm. delivering now. Thank you. Great. Well, yeah. thank you so very much. My pleasure. And uh, let me just take this opportunity on your behalf to mention about the Prime Minister's press conference. Yes. Is it going to be live? Yes, it, it will be live. Okay, so it's going to be live. Yes. So to encourage Canadians to tune into in GIS, GIS right. um, this afternoon. Yes. Uh, what time does it start? At quarter past three. Quarter past three. Yeah. So The time great. machine from six to quarter past three. Great. Awesome, yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. Prime Minister will give an update about his visit to Cuba and yes. the accomplishments, etc. I know he has quite a strong team yes. with him, so looks as though there's lots in store to share. Yes. Great. Well, thank you for being part of the Heartbeat today and um, come again next time. And thank Not you just when you're acting. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for having me. And just want to say to the people of Guinea, Kayako and Pidi Matnik, it is a pleasure to, to serve you. And, you know, I will do so with all of my heart and I will continue to make you proud and to do what I can do to, you know, to, to help our people move forward. Great. Thank well, you. thank you very much, Minister. Yes, thank you also. Wonderful. Have okay. a great Sunday afternoon. And okay. thank you to all those of you who joined us today on WeFM, Vibes FM, Spice Capital Radio, Talk Grenada. And now we have right along out of Brooklyn, New York and 100.5 FM Labby Station out of Grenville. Thank you all for being part of the program today and join us again next Sunday when we'll do it all over again. Thank you and have a great Sunday afternoon. Goodbye now. Right.